Hi, my name's Christina Hitchings. I lived at Camp 5, Menzies Bay, um, in 1953 when I was four years old. I lived there for about a year or so with my mum, dad and my sister. Um, it was a good experience. It was the first place I ever remember living. Growing up in Camp 5. A conversation with my grandma. I really enjoyed that year that we were there. Um, it was unique in that it's semi-isolated because, you know, although Campbell River wasn't far away, it wasn't the easiest drive. And so the community was important and people all looked out for each other and it was a nice atmosphere. And the children all played with one another and we were free to do what we wanted because there wasn't any real dangers there. And we played and made up games ourselves, like built tree forts <laughs> and uh, yeah, and played, you know, hopscotch, baseball, all things that didn't really cost anything because none of us had many toys or anything like that. And we just improvised and as I say, built a tree fort which had bad consequences for my sister <laughs> because I was four years old, she was 13 and I used to get down from the tree fort by jumping into her arms. Um, one day she came to tell me lunch was ready and was there and I thought it was time for me to jump down. She wasn't ready. I ended up falling on top of her, knocking her to the ground and giving her a huge black eye. The day before she was supposed to go to guide camp, she never forgave me for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, but we had a, a you know, there was um, a small school there which my sister went to. Of course, I was too young for school. Um, and then in the summer, the, there was a Bible camp as such that we both went to, and that was. That was fun, and at the, the last day of that summer, they took us on a picnic to Brewster Lake, and we all had fun, but in the end, we were waiting for our parents to pick us up, and I must have wandered off down to a little wooden raft um, uh, dock, and I got too close to the edge and fell in. But luckily, my dad arrived when he did, and he jumped in and hauled me out again, so his timing couldn't have been better. <laughs> the days that it was too wet to, to play outside or the kids that were mostly older than me were at school, um, I just played in our trailer. We had our trailer there and um, yeah, I played with my mum's button jar and uh, my Chinese checkerboard and I learned how to knit that summer and I learned how to read over the time we were there as well because a friend of my mum's from England sent me a, a beautiful to me book because children's books were pretty boring in those days but this was fantastic, it was about that big it was pop-up pictures of the Queen and the coaches and all of the coronations things and I thought it was amazing so I wanted to learn how to read it and. That's the best thing ever for me because I've had a lifetime of really enjoying books and reading. While we were at Camp 5, we um, lived in a trailer because um, my dad thought he'd probably be moving around, which proved to be true. And we had been previously to come to come into Camp 5 and he wanted his family with him, so we had a small trailer that we, we lived in and we were parked opposite the houses that camp had for the families to live in. Uh, there was a small bedroom, a very small bathroom, a very, very small kitchen which was part of the living room in which my mum and dad slept on a pull-out sofa. So it wasn't luxurious <laughs> but but we we managed and yeah we, when we had to move, we just secured the cupboard doors and off we went behind my dad's panel truck. So I had to sit on my mum's lap. Uh, there was no seat belts in those days. 
just didn't exist. And my sister had a little wooden stool that she had to sit on just behind the two front seats and hang on to the front seats while we were travelling. And in the back of that panel where she was sitting was all the my dad's tools and occasionally our washing machine. So these would <laughs> all clatter about and fly about when we were driving over the gravel road back to Camper River, etc. A bit different safety in those days too, but <laughs> good job we've got what we've got now. <laughs> Yeah, we had to wait until Saturday because my dad was the only one that can drive, could drive, my mum didn't. As a lot of the women didn't at that time because most families just had one car and often the men would take the car to work and so you did everything once a week when, when, when dad or husband could, could drive you there. I remember one night, I assume it was summer, I can't really remember, but I know there was none of the men around, so they must have been working the graveyard shift because of fire season. And um, there was somebody knocking on the door. Um, my mum answered and it was a lady from across the road. Her house was on fire. So my sister went off to get the men at the camp because I don't think any of us had a phone then. And uh, my mum and her went across the road, you know, coats over their pyjamas. And uh, I was told to stay in the trailer because I, obviously I was only four. And I watched it all from the window. And uh, there was my mum and the lady whose house it was with a tiny fire extinguisher <laughs> standing with a flashlight reading the directions on the fire and the roof of the house was alight. I don't really think the fire extinguisher would have helped a great deal but fortunately the men arrived from the camp and uh, they got it under control but I don't think the house was uh, much good afterwards but at least nobody was injured and in retrospect it was quite an hilarious episode. <laughs> <laughs> One of my memories of that summer and us kids out playing was learning how to play baseball. I wasn't very good then and I'm not very good now, <laughs> but a little boy from across the road tried desperately hard to teach me. He'd even get behind me and hold my arms so that he could swing the bat, so that sometimes I hit the ball. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it was all good fun. I was the youngest of the children that lived in those houses, but uh, we all just played together as different age groups, mainly little boys that lived across from us. So, as I say, we did things like build tree forts. Um, we made bows and arrows out of the twigs that were, were there and a piece of string and uh, made little guns and we chased one another around and and like drew hopscotch in the dirt road that was outside and we had sort of baseball games <laughs> and yeah just anything we could think of was a game you know we just played all day doing things that we could make up as a bits of wood and yeah everything that was behind our trailer and I think everybody had a good time really but, you know there was not anything like actual playgrounds for the children or anything like that, not that I knew of anyway, but we just played near where we lived and it, it worked out fine. They were nice kids and we all had fun there, I think. It was a pleasant experience being a camper. Have you ever asked your grandparent about their childhood? You might be surprised what you can learn 